Hi all, I haven't been in my shop much the last couple weeks due to a remodeling project, but I got a couple things to show you. Um, first of all, I uh, turned, I'm turning these flat panel doors into shaker style doors. So my wife asked for something a little different um, and she wanted them to be, uh, they, they were bypassing doors inside a frame and I bought some hardware to, uh, to make them like barn style doors. But uh, the way I went about this was uh, the hardware that we bought was good for one and three eighths or one and three quarter doors. So we happened to have one and three eighths slab doors on the, on the closet. So I got some three eighths MDF and just made some, made some strips and, and, uh, and glued them on. So, you know, I sanded the door down real well and, and use some joint compound on the edges. Um, clamping these down was a little bit of a challenge. I had to, I had to use a call across each one of uh, each one of these cross pieces, and I, I had just about every clamp I owned on the darn thing. Um, but it, it it came out well. Um, I filled all uh, filled all the joints with joint, joint compound. Um, one thing I've learned about working with MDF when you when you cut it and and then you go to paint it, that edge gets kind of fuzzy and it really wants to soak in stuff. So I don't know if you can see that, but um, basically if I wipe joint compound on that edge, let it dry and then give it a quick sand, it gets nice and smooth again. And, and that helps it keep the same texture, if you will, as the rest of the MDF. So besides uh, besides that, as far as prep work goes, I've also learned to use a shellac-based primer when I'm painting MDF. Um, it, it dries quickly. Um, I had a little bit of a problem uh, with some uh, latex primer that I used on MDF once, and it might have been because I put a thick coat on it, but it swelled up on the joints where that water got you know from the latex based product got into the to the cut grain and 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 soaked in and, and I had a lot of sand in to fix that so shellac base doesn't do that so um as you see I've got one done I'll get that other one over there done uh well, I hope to get it done this weekend but I'll probably work on it through the week but uh yeah that's how that's how I've that's how I've done that and uh and it, I think it came out well. I guess besides that, the other project I had for the same room was this desk. I showed you, I showed you this when they were nightstands, and you can see the, you can see the difference in the top two drawers on each side, um, because of the the nightstand set around in here for a couple years, and and they're oxidized a little bit, and the fresh wood on the top two drawer fronts um, is different, but. Basically what I did here is I, I glued together a, a stub tenon panel kind of for the, for the back and uh, I added a little piece up here under the, under the front to bridge the two pieces together. They're just, they're just pocket screwed in um, to hold it together. I, I don't think I would dare try to pick this up as one piece, um, but because we're recycling a couple things, I'll, I'll take it apart. And I made an MDF top and and uh, put a put a hard maple edge around that so that it wears a little better. Um, this is going to get painted, and oh, I'm thinking about getting a piece of glass for the top. We've got a glass shop next town over that does a nice job reasonably, and uh, I think if I if I did that, this this MDF top would last forever. Um, so that's what I've uh, that's what I've been up to the last few days out here. Um, one thing I'm gonna one thing I picked up I picked up a pair of these. Um, I was watching uh, I was watching some videos. I'll probably never replace my my table saw over there, my Delta Unisaw. Um, at this point in in my uh, 
woodworking journey. That saw has served me well for 25 years and I'm pretty sure it'll last me 25 more. So I don't watch a lot of a lot of reviews. Um, but Greg's Workshop, who is it's a great small channel. I don't know why he doesn't have 10 or 100 times many subscribers as he does because he does a great job. Um, but I always watch his videos and he did a he did a review of his saw stop jobs job site pro um and one of the things that i really liked that he showed was the was the low fence um when i'm ripping some inch and a quarter wide pieces on my table saw i'm always really i'm always really good about putting the guard on and it's hard to get a push stick in there so when i saw that low fence i thought i'm going to make me one of those and uh, I picked these up to, to fasten it onto my table saw fence. Um, I've used all kinds of different, you know, different auxiliary fences. And usually I just hold them on with a clamp like this, um, which does get in the way. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what I can come up with. I think I'll, I think I'll make a stop for my cross cut sled with a dovetail on it and use one of those clamps. And like I say, that that low L-shaped fence to get get my fence away from you know away from the guard so I can get my push stick in there and um, yeah we'll see what else uh, we'll see what else we come up with but um, that's kind of what's going on and and what uh, what will be coming in the future and I appreciate you watching and we'll talk to you the next time.